Hello everyone, following on from my video last week looking at the first of two special Marvel Legends X-Men themed sets, celebrating the cover of Uncanny X-Men number 275 with artwork by Jim Lee. Today I'm going to be reviewing the second of these sets which covers the final characters on this cover, Storm, Forge and Jubilee. For me this is probably the less exciting of the two sets. We've seen these body moulds and indeed these characters several times before in the Marvel Legends line so there's nothing really new about this set. But that being said it's really fun to round out the collection of the characters in these costumes. Now if you saw the video last week, obviously this packaging is going to look very familiar. In the background, greyed out there or blued out, we have that Uncanny X-Men 275 cover which looks pretty cool. Then we have these three images of the three figures in various poses which looks quite striking to be fair. And the rest is just black borders. So this is still pretty fun and presentable. It's pretty consistent with the other set in this series so you can put them side by side and it looks pretty nice. And then when we look at the side panels, on one side we have the photos of the actual figures stacked up on the side panel and then on the other side we see the actual comic book images of those same characters. I really like having this choice and I think this works really well. The reverse of the packaging is pretty similar to what we see on the front, at least in terms of the design. In the background we have a montage of various comic book pages and then we have three individual but brand new poses of these characters in action. So this looks pretty cool, it also outlines the various accessories they come with and it looks pretty presentable if a little bit routine. Of course, this is plastic free packaging, so when we open this set up, we are confronted with a cardboard box with several layers, within which there's a lot of rice paper baggies and a lot of folding flaps that once you unpeel these layers, you can see the figures underneath again in their rice paper packaging. And as I already mentioned in the previous video, I'm not a huge fan of this approach. It's mainly because it's quite difficult to get these figures back into position after you want to put them away. I'm going to kick off in reverse order and start with Jubilee. We've only had a handful of Jubilee figures across the years and this is recycling some of those pieces from earlier figures. As far as I can tell this seems to be the same head sculpt that we've had previously. If there's any difference it's very very subtle although I will say the paint apps seem far superior this time around especially if we look at the skin tone in the face there in particular but also if we look at the eyebrows particularly in the eyes there's lots of colour there which I think looks really nice and everything just looks a little bit more even and more realistic. I should hope the colours are nice and bright on this costume. Now sadly the division between the yellow and blue is not sculpting in, it is painted in so sometimes that line can be a little bit blurry, a little bit jagged which is unfortunate but otherwise this looks very striking and very colourful. The belt is a separate piece and looks really nice. You'll also notice she has a much smaller frame than the other female characters in these two sets. And this is a really nice touch because it really helps with scaling. However, as a consequence, it does mean that she has that pin in the forearm, which means she's not going to have the same double jointed articulation as we see in the other characters. And whilst we're talking about scaling, here she is standing next to the storm of this set. So you can really see the clear differences between these two body molds. As for articulation, she has a ball joint at the top of the neck there so she can spin her head all the way around, she can lean it left and right a little bit and she's able to nod it up and down a pretty healthy distance as well. She has ball joints in the shoulders so she can kick her arms up and out a huge distance there which is great. As I mentioned she does have that pin at the elbow so she can rotate that lower forearm all the way around but it will only hinge to about 90 degrees. Sadly there is no double joint here. There is another pin at the wrist so that hand will rotate all the way around and of course it will hinge forwards and backwards. Now I think she has a ball joint at the top of her torso, she can move all the way around from side to side but leaning her left and right is really difficult, I couldn't get mine to bend the other way and she does look a little lopsided. Now she will bend forwards and backwards a little bit as well but again not as much as I would have expected. More ball joints in the hips allow the legs to kick out to the side, there is of course that complementary thigh swivel at the top there as well. The legs can kick forwards and backwards and there is a double joint at the knee this time that allows that lower leg to kick all the way back. And then finally there is an ankle rocker at the bottom of the ankle there so the foot will hinge forwards and backwards and it will lean from side to side. Jubilee probably fares the best when it comes to accessories of the three figures in this set. She has an extra pair of closed fists, she has blast effects and she also has these individual goggles and an alternate head. We've seen all of these pieces before of course but I do think these are quite nicely done. I particularly like the translucent colours between the different shades of purple in the blast effects 
And the alternate head is really cool. I do like that bubblegum effect, but I do have to point out you have to be very careful when changing these heads because it would be very easy for that bubblegum to snap off. So, all in all, I'm probably only going to give this figure three stars, and that's not because it's a bad figure, but it just feels like it's a little bit limited, and it just feels like there's nothing really new or innovative about this particular figure. The costume's quite nicely done, the accessories are great, but there's nothing particularly groundbreaking here that doesn't feel like there's anything particularly new or that exciting about this figure. Likewise, obviously, it suffers from having the smaller frame and the more limited articulation when it comes to the arms, which definitely hurts it a little bit. Next up, we have Forge, and I imagine this is probably the figure that most people are going to get excited for because to date we've only ever had one other Forge figure in the Marvel Legends line and that was about five or six years ago. I think they've reused the head sculpt from the previous release but it looks vastly different because of the paint apps. I particularly like this skin tone again this looks pretty authentic and realistic to me. I think the one area where it's maybe lacking a little bit is in that bandana around his head. Just would have been nice to have some paint washes running over this as it is it is just molded in that base red plastic. The sculpting is absolutely fine but it would have been nice if there'd been a wash running through this. Likewise through the hair that would have been really a nice touch as well. Uh, sadly it's just molded in that base plastic colour. It's absolutely fine, but it would have just been enhanced significantly by a light wash. For the most part, the body mould has been recycled from the Banshee and Gambit figures, but there are a couple of new additions here. Of course, he does have his shoulder holster, and of course it has those individual pockets, which you'll notice there's actually some paint apps on there as well, indicating buttons, which is a nice touch. Of course, the crisscrosses at the back, and there's a peg hole in the back there as well. Uh, this looks pretty good, but of course the major difference with this figure is his right thigh, because of course it has that synthetic robotic thigh. This also looks to be a new sculpt, and I really like the paint that they've used here. It's got that slight metallic sheen to it, which just makes it much more reflective in the light and really makes it pop. The only nitpick I have with this is that you can see on the adjoining knee joint there that there is that rather unseemly blue line, which does look a bit unseemly and a bit noticeable when you do pose this figure. And as a comparison, here he is next to the previously released Forge. So as you can see, they haven't really recycled an awful lot from that previous figure. This all seems to be a completely different sculpt, actually. And the differences are quite striking when you stand them next to each other like this. Everything from the colouring, the body mould, and the various bits and pieces, including obviously his gun holster, his boots, and his belt. And I have to say, as much as I like that previous release, this new one is much better. I much prefer the sculpt and the colour of this figure. And taking a closer look at these two head sculpts, they look very, very different. And it's difficult to know whether the sculpts are different or whether it's just the paint apps. But either way, the paint apps are clearly much more superior on this new release. As I mentioned, the skin tone just looks more even. But I just really like the detailing around the eyes in particular. And the fact that we can really see a lot in that furrowed brow there as well. This looks just a lot sharper to my eyes. That being said, the one thing I think the previous release did better was the actual hair bobble in the back of the hair piece there. As you can see, they actually bothered to paint that in a shade of brown, which just gives it a little bit more texture, a bit more depth, and just separates it from the rest of the hair, which I think is a, a much better approach. There's no real surprises when it comes to articulation. He does have that ball joint in the head, so he can spin it all the way around, he can lean it left and right, and he can nod it up and down a pretty decent distance as well. He's got ball joints in the shoulder, so of course he can kick his arms up, but there's also that complementary butterfly wing joint there as well in the shoulder. I love this joint, just gives him such greater range, and I really, really like this a lot. He's got a complementary bicep swivel as well, double joints at the elbow, so that lower forearm can reach all the way back there, and there is a pin swivel at the wrist as well, so that wrist will rotate all the way around, and it will hinge forwards and backwards. There is a straight swivel at the waist, so he can move from side to side. And then there is an ab crunch as well, so he can bend forwards and backwards. A huge range of motion here, <laughs> which uh, is pretty cool. There's ball joints in the hips, so the legs will kick out to the side. There is a thigh swivel at the very top there. And there's also a boot cut swivel as well at the top of the boot, which is great. The legs will kick forwards, they'll kick backwards, there's another double joints at the knee there, and then finally there is the ankle rocker allowing the foot to move from side to side and hinge forwards and backwards. When it comes to accessories, Forge is a little light. He's got an extra pair of alternate clothes, fists, and this high-tech rifle. 
I really like this rifle. I really like the mold and I like the way it's been painted. There's some nice paint tabs on here. We can see a little bit of pink and brown and silver and I think it works really well. Now this is actually a different weapon to what he came with first time around in that Caliban wave and I think this is much more appropriate, much more bulky and hefty and feels uh, more like Forge. Now he has no problems holding it. He holds it really nice and securely in his grip with both hands and I think this looks really, really effective. I feel like we've seen this weapon before. I don't think this is a brand new sculpt but it works really well with this figure. And all in all, I'm gonna have to say, yeah, I think this is a five star figure for me. I really, really like this body mold. I think it works really tremendously well. I love how bright and colorful it is. But then I think they've really massively enhanced that head sculpt. So it looks really much, much stronger than it did previously. I love the accessories he does come with. The articulation is fantastic. And well, what not to like really. I think this is just a tremendous upgrade to the previous version we already had. And that brings us finally to Storm. Now I've got to be honest, I'm not the biggest Storm fan in the world, but there is something unique and interesting about this version of the character. And that really comes down to this head sculpt. I don't think we've seen this head sculpt before, certainly not this hair. We've definitely had different hairstyles from Storm in the past in the line, but I don't think we've had this shorter mid-range length. Once again, I think they've done a really nice job with the paint tabs, particularly on the skin tone of this figure. I think it looks really good. I really like the whites that they've used for her eyes as well. That's a really nice touch. There's actually a little bit of a wash running through this hair as well. Just give it a bit more texture, which I think works nicely here. And then her earrings, I really love the gold paint they've used on those earrings. I think this looks really striking and works pretty well. I don't really have too much to say on the body sculpt or the body mold in general because this is the same body that we saw on the Psylocke figure in the last video so there's nothing really different here other than say this is a pretty solid mold all in all. The only key thing to really mention is that she does obviously have the double joints at the elbow so this is much improved over the Jubilee. In terms of articulation, she does of course have a ball joint in the neck there so she can move her head up and down, side to side and left and right. She has a ball joint in the shoulder so the arms will kick up and out. There is a complementary bicep swivel and those double jointed elbows which are absolutely fantastic. So she can bend that lower arm all the way back to her head if you wanted to which is great. Now she also has a pin swivel at the wrist so that wrist rotates all the way around. It hinges forwards and backwards as you would expect. And then moving on to the torso she does have a ball joint here which will allow her to move from side to side, lean left and right and bend forwards and backwards. More ball joints in the hips, allowing the legs to kick out to the side, upper thigh swivel, and of course the legs will kick forwards, backwards, double joints at the knees, allowing that lower leg to kick all the way back, and then finally the ankle rocker, allowing that foot to kick forwards, backwards, and move from side to side. Like Forge, Storm is pretty light when it comes to accessories. She does come with another pair of closed fists, but she also has those open hands with the electricity effect, the sort of lightning effect coming out the fingertips. All in all, this is a pretty nice figure, but I'm only going to give it three stars. And that's because we've had a lot of Storm figures across the years, and there's nothing really special about this Storm figure. Yeah, it does look to be a brand new head sculpt, a brand new hairstyle, and I think that will appeal to a lot of people. But other than that, there's nothing really particularly special about this figure. We've had these lightning effect hands before many times now. The costume, as we know, and the body mold has been used literally on another figure in the same wave <laughs> from that Psylocke figure. So it doesn't feel very distinct or very unique to this character. And to be fair, I know you could argue that about any of the figures in this line, because they're all wearing the same costume, or mostly recycling <laughs> the same body molds. But what I mean is, is that this doesn't really feel uniquely like Storm. In fact, I don't think she's best served by this costume like the other figures are, or the other characters are in this line. And all in all, there's just something a little bit gawky about this figure as well. It, there's nothing really wrong with it at all, but something just doesn't feel like Storm somehow. So there you have it. All in all, this is a very nice set. I really like all of these figures. There isn't a bad one amongst them. Of the two sets though, I would say that this is probably the less exciting. The first set definitely had much more exciting characters, obviously Banshee, for example. Whereas this set feels like it's kind of retreading the same ground, but it's really well done. 
Of course, the most exciting part is putting all seven of these figures together so we have all of these characters in these uniforms. And I think they look an absolute treat. So this is really, really fun. I'm really pleased that Hasbro gave us these figures all pretty close together as well rather than making us wait years as they sometimes do. Uh, I think these work really well. They look really, really fun. And they're a nice way to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the X-Men. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.